Okay, so let's continue our discussion on probability. So we've talked a little bit already about doing unions and intersections. So we've got the probability of A union B, and we've got intersections, the probability of A intersect B. All right, so if we break it down real quick into a quick picture, we know that our sample space is the whole box and individual events can be denoted by like circles on the inside. We could have this be A and we can have this guy be B. So we know that there is some interaction or some overlap there between A and B. Okay, so the probability of A union B if we have mutually exclusive events, so let me put up a C here too. So if our events are mutually exclusive, it's just the probability of A plus the probability of B. That would be true for, so this is A and B generic. Now let's look specifically, that would be A and C. They are mutually exclusive or they don't have any overlap. If they do have overlap, we need to subtract off that overlapping region, which is the probability of A intersect B. And this is really our rule of addition with our probabilities. Okay, so let's come over here and we look at the probability of A and B. So in order to do this, we need to see how much interaction is there, how much overlap is there. So we need like the number of overlapping outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes in our sample space. All right, so we covered that already and we covered like just the basic rule of probability. Probability of the event is number of events in A divided by the number of events in the sample space. So let's add on to this. We can also do what's known as given, which is a really important one. So here we go, probability of A given B. Okay, so when we talk about this, we should think about, okay, what is the probability that I am, um, we could do something like probability that I am hungry given that I have already eaten lunch. Uh, we can do these givens where we take our sample space and we basically make a subset of it. Let's write up a quick contingency table. And we can say happy, sad, and then we could do like eat lunch, didn't eat lunch. Okay, and so we could go out and do this quick survey. We ask people, okay, are you happy or sad? You can't be both, you gotta pick one or the other. And we can also ask them, have you eaten lunch or have you not eaten lunch? All right, so if you eat lunch, you know, maybe we can do something like 50 here, 20, and then maybe it's like 40 and uh, 30, for example. Okay, so if we were to do this given, let's instead of using letters, let's actually go ahead and write this in, in words. So the, what is the probability that you are happy given, so line, I want to write that out, given, that you have eaten lunch. Okay. So when we say that, when we say that we're the probability of being happy given that we have eaten lunch, we are only interested now at people who have eaten lunch because we said that that has already happened given that we have eaten lunch. We're now only interested in our eat lunch column. So the probability of being happy given that we have eaten lunch is gonna be, okay, number of events, um, number of outcomes that we're interested in. So this is our happy is 50. And of all people who have eaten lunch already, it is 70, so we'd have 5 sevenths as our probability. Okay, now in more formal terms, 
This is kind of like writing it, this is kind of the shorthand way to do it. The long way to do it, let's get up the full on equation. Probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. So let's do our eat lunch example again. So what we can do is we can say equals to probability of A intersect B or the probability of happy intersecting eating lunch. All right, so that would be our 50 divided by our sample space. So we'd have to add up everything. 50, 30, 80, 20, 100, 140, 140. Okay, but we need to divide now by the probability of B or the probability of eating lunch. So if the probability of eating lunch is going to be this total, or we can also put them in the columns or, or in the margins. Remember, they're called the marginals. 70, this is 70, 60, 80. And now we can do, okay, what's the probability of being half of, sorry, probability of eating lunch? Probability of eating lunch is 70 divided by 140. Okay, now if you remember your fraction rules, we can, if you divide by a fraction, you could multiply by its reciprocal, or we can say 50 divided by 140 multiplied by 140 divided by 70. These guys cancel out and check it out. We got the same result as we did up here using kind of our, our intuition. So given really it subsets our sample space and it, um, and it, it allows us to do some more interesting questions um, or more complex questions. We can always use this rule, probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Now note real quick, the probability that goes on the denominator is the event that is on the right. That's very important to know. If you put the probability of A in the bottom, that's a different question. It's not going to be equivalent. So the last thing that we should do is talk about, okay, what about A given B if they were mutually exclusive? Okay, so let's talk about A given B of eating lunch or didn't, didn't eat lunch. Okay, so it kind of sounds weird now because we'd say like, what is the probability of eating lunch given that you didn't eat lunch? And you're like, wait a second, it's zero. You already just told me given that I didn't eat lunch, what's the probability that I ate lunch? Well, it's, it's zero. So we know that this is true with mutually exclusive events. Remember, on a contingency table, mutually exclusive events are the columns are mutually exclusive from each other and the rows are mutually exclusive from each other. So if we go back and we look here, we can say that A intersect B, or does lunch, eat lunch and didn't eat lunch, do they intersect? The answer is no. So the probability right here would be zero and then the conditional probability drops out to being zero. So the Conditional probability of mutual exclusive events is zero. Let me write that up real quick. So conditional probability of mutually exclusive events is zero. Okay, hope that helps out.